tell you, Madam Speaker, that uh, when we, this thing called Arambe, this is, Arambe is one of the conduits of corruption. And the way it was dealt with at that time by the president was first to give instructions to all public officers that you participate in Arambis. You can contribute money in Arambis, but don't go there as guest of honor. Don't go there with monies that have been given. This have been sent by so and so, sent so and so. so. The so and so you are giving money from are the ones who have corrupted you because they came for you for free service. And instead of giving them free service, you ask them for bribes in order to, 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 to get those services. Madam Speaker, I can also tell you that corruption starts from the top. The fish rots from the head. If you are head of an institution and you are corrupt, there's no way you are going to deal with people beneath you and instruct them not to involve in corruption. If you are the head of a, a ministry, there's no way you are going to instruct people below you not to be corrupt when you yourself, they know you are corrupt. Madam Speaker, there's no way if you are the president of the country, people think and have that perception that you are going to tell them not to do the same. Madam Speaker, the, this the thing called corruption starts with uh, supplies. When you go to supplies, the issuing of contracts, you find people are lining up. Contractors are lining up in uh, big offices with briefcases. And those briefcases, if they are stopped, those contractors will do a good job, they will do quality work, and the people will get uh, quality, I mean, will get uh, uh, value for their taxes, the taxes they pay. Madam Speaker, you cannot be asking people to pay taxes and they don't see the result of the taxes they pay. They don't see the benefits of those taxes which they, 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 they pay, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I know that I was living in a country where the president said that there will be no briefcases to his office. Any contractor who went to his office, he told them, please go and do your work. I don't want you to come to my office for anything. You go and tender, go and do proper tendering, and if you win it because you deserve it, get the job and do it as you should. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, within a very, very short time, that country was raising sufficient money to pay for their recurrent expenditures fully, to service their debts fully without any stress. They were paying for their development budget almost 95%. Madam Speaker, when I was uh, in, in government here, Madam Speaker, we managed to raise sufficient money to service our debts comfortably. We managed to raise sufficient money to, to pay salaries and recurrent expenditures comfortably. And the, the, the development the budget was being financed 90% from our, our own budget, Madam Speaker. What happened? This is because anybody, any minister, who was mentioned in the case of corruption was asked by the president himself to step aside until investigations are complete, Madam Speaker. You had to step aside until investigations are completed. If you are cleared, you come back. If you are not cleared, you don't come back to the office. Madam Speaker, there was a time when my own minister, Amos Kimunya, declared that he will not resign even though he was being mentioned in some cases of corruption. And he said he would resign over his dead body, that he would do it over his dead body. But Madam Speaker, the, the president insisted that he must step aside. And Muthaura was in my, our office from morning to evening telling him that if you don't step aside, the president is going to sack you. You are going to be sacked. 
And Madam Speaker, I can tell you, he did it. And he called me to join him in the press, and we sat there, and he told me, don't